everyone, it's me, Catherine, the Needleberry Stitcher. Today's Thursday, December the 28th, and I'm here with you to film, record my end of year whip parade. I think. I think. If I can get through everything. I don't know if I'll be able to do that today. I'm gonna try. This could be a very long video if I try to film everything because I have now over 90 whips. I don't know anymore how many I have. What I thought I would do is start my video here with just going through the ones that I worked on this year in 2023. Uh, there may be a couple that are in the mix here that I pulled out to work on but then never actually got around to working on but since they're already out I'm just gonna film, I'm just gonna show you those two. And I'll let you know if I've worked on them or not. Um, I started using an app earlier this year. Actually, it was the end of last year because I have a couple of whips that are in my app that I know I didn't work on this year. So I think it was the end of last year. I started using um, the app called Cross Stitch Journal from Blitz Stitch. Um, Brian over at Blitz Stitch, check out his channel. He's got some tutorials on how to use his app. Um, instructions on you know you can download it in the App Store it's a very very small one-time fee to purchase it it's not a subscription based you just pay once and it has so many features in it and he continues to add more features to it I'm not sure why anyone would not use it I know there's some other apps out there and people are probably you know like oh I already use this app so I mean I'm not like saying you should abandon what you're already using but if you're not using an app and you're looking for a really good one cross stitch journal is really really good so I do have most of my whips in here that I worked on this year there are looks like there's 26 I think there might be one or two of those that I didn't actually work on this year but I will I'll let you know if there's some that I didn't actually work on. I'm looking at the list right now and it looks like I've worked on most of them, so. So, if you're like me, you're like, oh great, here's this long video, how am I gonna survive this thing? It, most, I don't expect many of you to watch it all the way through, I just don't. Because I think it's gonna be pretty long. And if it's not very long, then please watch it. <laughs> but if it's too long, like, don't worry about it. But, um, so I put together just very quickly before we get started, a list of, well, I call it my stitcher's guide for surviving my video. Because I think you're going to need some, some tips for getting through this with me. So tip number one, well, it's not really so much a tip as a note. Um, my hair and makeup staff are all on holidays this week. So this is what you get. Um, a green festive holiday spirited t-shirt um the hair that's just a little on the wild side no makeup sorry and glasses because i just don't feel like wearing contacts this week what the hell stop saying that what the hell so there you go that's my first note um next this video and i'm reading it from my phone because i had to make these notes for myself i'll probably you know this just is probably one of those things where um, I deviate from my list throughout this, but this is what we're going to do to get started. This video will be recorded in segments and edited. There's no way I can sit here and film all in one go. So it may be choppy at certain points, and I apologize for that. But again, we're just, again, it's ditcher survival at this point. Um, it's recommended that you procure a warm beverage prior to watching and your favorite project to work on. And a cookie. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Not all whips were worked on in 2023. I already mentioned that. But the focus for the part first part of the video will be what I've either stitched on or pulled out to stitch on. Um, and maybe never got around to, but it's that's that first 25, 26 ish projects that I'll show you. Um, I'm supposed to be working right now, so please don't tell my boss. Pets are all around me, so barking may occur. Don't panic, this is normal. 
And just remember that if you don't watch the entirety of this video, that's okay. You're still awesome. Awesome! Love you! Go ahead, people! Go ahead, people! Love you! You're awesome! You're awesome! Go ahead, people! So, there is something that I want to share with the stitching community, something that is very, very important to me, something that I cherish. You probably can see right here, I had this in my background of some of my later videos since last summer when I had a birthday and my dear stitchy friend, Amanda, Lucky Chance Stitcher, she made this for me. It is the most beautiful ornament and my name Catherine starts with a K. Look at this. It's absolutely stunning. Her finishing, the way she finished it with this, like it's just, it's so fitting for a nature bird theme. And um, this is something that I will treasure forever. So thank you, Amanda, for such a beautiful gift. Um, I truly value our friendship that we've developed and um, this is going to display proudly behind me in every video because it's absolutely stunning. Your stitching is gorgeous, but I already knew that. Um, so just had to showcase that. Thank you, Amanda, so much. All right, let's jump in. Let's get going. I'm going to show you what's on the top of the pile. It's the first few things are items um, that I have on my scroll rods that I never took off the scroll rods be for many reasons. It could be because I recently worked on it. It could also be because I'm sometimes too lazy to take things off the scroll frames when I'm done. It could also be because I have a really hard time getting things onto scroll frames. And once I get them on there just right, I panic thinking about trying to take them off um, and then having to put them back on again. So this one was one that I last worked on uh, during, I think it was before. I don't think I've worked on it since, but I worked on it um, before the Queen City Stitch Retreat in October of this year. So this was a new start for 2023. So I don't have any progress to show you from last year, obviously. Um, and this is Charlotte. Let me show you. I should have put another warning at the beginning for survival is that there are zippers and I will do my best to edit those out, but there might be some zipper sounds in the video. So this is Charlotte. And this is where I got to. I didn't get very far. She's got a whole great big giant dress down below that not as big as some of the other dresses on Mirabilia's, but it still goes down pretty long way down here. So uh, definitely got some work to do. Another survival tip I should have told you is that if you really get irked about uh, fabric that's not ironed, this video is not for you because uh, I don't iron anything. Um, all right, so that's the first one. Um, and I'm going to leave it on the scroll rods for now because I might work on it again. I tend to gravitate toward things that are already on scroll rods because it's just easier uh, for me because I don't like, I don't know, I just don't like switching between projects when I have to take something off scroll bars or put them on scroll bars or, I don't know, does anyone else do that? Where it's, I'm not a lazy person in general. I tend to be on the lazier side probably of people, but I don't think I'm, I think I like putting my effort into actually stitching and not like switching things out and organizing, which you can tell I'm a little, getting a little chaotic back here. Um, but anyway, that's, I don't know, I think I'll just maybe work on it again. I don't, I'm going to do a separate video of stuff I'm going to do in 2024 or plans for 2024 because I think what I worked on this year isn't necessarily what I'm going to put forward as focuses for 2024. So 
this really just is truly a whip parade. It's not going to be what I'm doing next year, but I may throw in, see, I'll get halfway through and be like, oh, I'm going to do this next year and, I'm gonna, and I'll have all these plans. Ignore anything I say in this video about 2024 because I really don't quite know. I might say things though, so just know. See, more tips, more tips. Um, I really should have, um, I, I really should have added more tips at the beginning because I'm gonna think of things as we go. My next one is called Angel of the New Dawn, another Mirabilia, and it's also another uh, start from this year, so I don't have a picture from last year to show you. And this is what it looks like. And I chose to do, I've had a few comments about like, are you nuts? Um, I chose to do it on black fabric. It's a black even weave uh, Lugana fabric. And that's as far as I got. Um, yeah, I just decided that, I just decided I wanted to do it on the darker fabric. I really want her to pop out of the fabric. And I think she is, this is in the middle. I started in the middle on this one. Yeah, I really love her. And it's funny because ever since I bought this pattern, I always thought like someday when I get around to doing that one, I'm gonna do it on black. And so I did. My next one is one that's been around with me for a while and I've shown it um, pretty much since the beginning of my filming of floss tube videos. And it's my Beauty and the Beast, which is a Tilton Crafts uh, artwork by Daniel Kordek and it's being stitched on 25 count Lugana. It's an even weave fabric. I'm pretty sure it's Lugana. It's 25 count one over one full cross and I'm gonna see if I can get the whole thing but I may not be able to get the whole thing. Um, I'll show you where it was last year when I finished working on it in my last year's whip parade and this is where it is now. So let's see if I can lift that up a little bit. There. So there's some at the top there, and then it's funny because I took this to the Queen City Stitch Retreat and I showed a few people, and someone said, like, oh, it's really much smaller in person than it is on your videos. And I'm like, yeah, it's true. It is actually a little smaller than in real life I think the, the camera has a way of making things look a lot bigger but like if I show it back here you can see it's like it's still pretty big but you can tell that it's not quite as monstrous as when I hold it up like this it looks really big when I put it <laughs> up close um, but yeah I, I just I love this one I had a lot of really nice comments on it at the retreat when you look up close like it's like anything, you can see a little bit of pixelation up close. Like in here, you can see it's just a little bit pixelated, but from far away, you can't tell. So, I love this one. Okay, so this next one I started uh, in November of 2022, and it's called Red's Resting Place. This is what it looks like. This is a piece that I picked out with my dad. He loves old red trucks. He said, let's pick out a pattern that has an old red truck in it, I would love for you to stitch me one. And I said, oh, okay. So this is the one that we picked. It's from Stony Creek. And um, what else to say about this one? I think in a previous video, I may have said that this was stitched on um, Vintage Country Mocha, but it's not. It's actually stitched on a Picture This Plus fabric, and the color is called Legacy. show you, hopefully I've had a picture in here already of what it looked like last year in my whip parade. And this is what it looks like now. So I didn't get tons of progress on it. Um, I really do love the fabric though. I think it looks a lot like, and it's hard to tell here, it's being washed out a little bit, but it's in real life, it's actually a lot like what's here on the cover photo. You can't really tell, but in real life, it actually looks very similar. Maybe a little less yellow is what's in the picture, so it's maybe a little more golden tone. Sorry for my light. But yeah, that's where I've gotten it to. 
And I just, earlier, I, I guess this year, or maybe it was last year in my whip parade video, I had said I wanted to get a lot more done on this this year, or even finish it this year, because I want to give it to my dad. I want him to have it. Uh, so I know I've already said, ignore me when I say that there are some that I, I'm going to work on next year. This one actually is one that I do want to work on next year, but I'm not going to commit or promise to getting it done. I just, I would like for it to be a focus. Um, and it, that's why I've left it on the scroll bars because I really do want to get this one done. So I know I already said it's a um, 28 count Legacy Lugana from Picture This Plus that's being stitched on. It's actually not a bad stitch. It's got some decent amount of blocks of color, especially in the trees. Um, there aren't a lot of color, like there's a lot of, there's three or four different greens, but there's like nice, good chunks of color blocking or blocked colors where you can just stitch with the thread and keep going until you run out and then switch to another color and keep going with that one until you run out. And it, it's pretty nice going. I actually really enjoy working on it. The roof is a little bit fiddly because it's got some colors in it that, there's a variegated color in here. I know you can't tell on the pattern because this is a computer mock-up, but there's some variegated thread in here and it's, um, this is all backstitched. Like every single roof line here is all backstitched. So that's going to take a little bit of time. I know I'm going to talk about plans for next year as I go, because I'm already feeling the urge to talk about like, oh, am I going to work on this one? Am I going to work on that one? Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying not to do that. Um, ignore me. How about this? Listen to me if you want to, if I'm talking about what I'm going to do next year, but at the end of the video, just purge everything that I said and know that there's another video that I'll probably do to talk about 2024 plans. And so just like hit the reset button when you start watching that video in the future and just know that, okay, that's really what I'm planning to do for 2024. Even though I'm like dreaming and going through stuff in this video. Okay. This next one, is called uh, it's a lavender and lace pattern it's called Lady Claire it's lavender and lace pattern number 45 and this is what it looks like I did work on it this year but not very much I'll show you a picture of it where it was last year when I did my parade and I'm going to show you where it is now There's actually some down here that's done, but I didn't take it off the bars here to be able to show you. Um, I could unroll it, but it's all like got this long arm clamp thing on it for my Lowry stand, and it's not the easiest to do. I really haven't done that much on it, you can tell compared to my picture from last year. Not very much. I don't know what it is. I, I'm having a really hard time, first of all, with the fabric. It's a witch alt linen. I'm having a really hard time stitching on it. I just, it's not my favorite fabric at all. And the other thing is that this green is just really fiddly. I don't know. I've tried different ways of stitching. I think the combination of the fabric combined with just the confetti, confetti usually doesn't bother me, but I'm just not a fan of the fabric combined with the pattern so I, I'm not saying I'll never stitch it but it's gonna be a very slow progressing one because it's just not my favorite I love the design but just not my favorite project to work on the next one was started I'm gonna go back to my app here on some of these projects to know when I started them this is called home in the mountains it was started June 19th 2023 it was originally supposed to be a start with Suki the brown eyed stitcher for her birthday. She had a birthday start and everyone was starting home in the mountains. So I didn't get it started when she started hers and when the, the rest of the group started theirs. Uh, I didn't start mine until June, but it's being stitched. It's a golden kite, full coverage design. Um, it's being stitched on 28 count. Is it 28 count? I think it is 28 count. I think at one time I had thought about converting to 25, but I already had the 28. And I don't want it to be super massive. Um, I originally started this one. Um, there's a picture of what it looks like 
here because I, um, I don't have it printed out. But I originally started this design on the 28 doing two over one tent stitch because I had the chart that I had originally bought was the blended threads pattern. So in order to do blended threads, you have to do two strands minimum. You can't just do one strand, obviously. Um, so I had bought the blended threads pattern and I had 28 count. I was going to do two over one tent stitch and that was going to be my first go at doing a project with tent stitch. There is so much confetti in it and it being on 28 count that there was no way I could do two strands. It was so bulky. It was, it was getting so thick and my threads were getting tangled and I started parking and then I stopped parking and then it was, it was just, I just can't handle that much thread on the back of my work crisscrossing and, and trying to keep it all sorted. So I rebought the pattern in the non-blended version and started doing one over one full cross on the 28 count. So this was a new start for this year. So I obviously don't have a picture of progress from last year and I don't have that much done this year. That is as far as I got on it so far. It's not a lot. I started working on it in diagonal squares just so I could keep things. I mean, look at this, I park and I mean, look how many threads colors are in just that tiny little area. Like it, this is a thread beast. I can tell already, at least this corner anyway, maybe there's other parts of the design in the sky or something that are going to be less thread heavy, but it's, this is no joke. This is a pretty, uh, pretty interesting one for sure. Um, and it's definitely not going to be boring because <laughs> there's a lot of color change. And I only have one more that I have on uh, scroll rods and it's upstairs. I'm in my downstairs craft room right now and it's upstairs on my Lowry. I have been working on it. It's my final start for 2023 and it'll be my last planned start for 2023 and hopefully my last start until the end of 2024 with the exception of maybe some ornaments. I might work on some smalls, some uh, projects that I could finish in less than a week. Um, I have had the urge to do some ornaments. I haven't done any over the years that I've kept. I've done some that I've given away as gifts, but I think seeing when it, when you see um, pictures of people on uh, Instagram who have these beautiful trees, Christmas trees and garlands and wreaths and um, going up the stair banisters with all these different ornaments, like that looks so pretty. So I think I'm going to allow myself only to be able to start just a few smalls Christmas ornament size and that's that's it. But I, I'm really going to try not to start anything new in 2024. Um, so all that being said, I'm going to wait until the very end of this video to show you my final project of 2023 that I'm super excited about. It's a kit that my youngest daughter got for me for Christmas and it's so pretty. I, I, I have the urge, like maybe I'm still in the honeymoon phase of it being so new, but I have the urge to keep working on it until it's done, which makes for really boring floss tube videos. But you know what? It, it might be one of those ones that I say, you know what? You guys might not see a lot of progress on an, on a whole lot of different things for a while. It might be just this one for a while. And, uh, but again, talking about next year already. Keep doing that. I knew I, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem through this whole video. Um, but, but I will show that one at the very end. The next piece is another start from this year, 2023. I started it on May 27th. And it's called Sewing Cats, and it's from Sew to Stitch. And I started this as a stitch along with Rogue Mama Stitcher, Jordan the Tattooed Stitcher, Burn Stitches, and uh, another small group of people that jumped on this as well. And they hosted the stitch along, the Sal, um, as my first Sew to Stitch. So they had a pattern chosen for everyone to do. It was a little girl doing some laundry, and I decided... <laughs> I don't know why, I just have always loved this particular design from Soda Stitch. And when I looked through all of the Soda Stitch patterns again on the website, on Etsy, this still was my favorite by far. So the Sewing Cats is the one that I started, and I have not finished it, but this is as far as I got. And 
I'm actually really happy with the progress so far because this is a really fun one to stitch on. The fabric is kind of a gray, like a mottled gray color. It's a color in cotton. And let's see. It's a 32 count limited edition gray from Color and Cotton. And I'll show you what it's gonna look like when it's done if I haven't already. Um, so I'm just about 33% complete. The pattern that I downloaded from through the Etsy shop, through the Soda Stitch Etsy shop, um, is pattern keeper, and pattern keeper compatible with the exception of the back stitching. So I put the pattern in Pattern Keeper to do the stitching part, and then I just pulled up the PDF on my phone when I was ready to do the back stitching, and I've just been, or not on my phone, I guess on my, I have like a little Android tablet, really cheap one that I use, Pattern Keeper, and I pulled it up on there, but isn't it just so cute? I love these little, the little kitten here with the little feet. It's so cute. This is a really fun one to work on. This next one is called Stitch an Inch Fall. And this is a pattern that I picked up at uh, Needlework Galleria in 2022. And I started it pretty much right away after I bought it. Uh, let's see, not quite. I guess I waited about a month. I started it on November 4th, 2022. And I'm stitching it on an even weave fabric. Uh, it's a 28 count even weave, one over one, full cross. So far I finished, it looks like it's 1,597 stitches. So like roughly 1,600 stitches on it. Um, I did not work on it at all in 2023. So I'll show you a picture of where it was at the end of 2022. I don't think I worked on it, maybe I did. I don't remember if I worked on it. I guess I'll see once I look at, I haven't gone through and pulled all the pictures of my progress from last year. I'll do that when I'm editing. So we'll see. Did I have any progress in 2022 or in 2023? Um, if it looks exactly the same, then I guess not. But there's no reason for this one not to be done. It is such a small one. It's so close to being done. Like I have all of the sky. The sky uses, um, there's a variegated floss, this variegated one that goes all the way across the top. I finished the variegated. Now it's just filling in all the other colors and it's it's not a hard one at all. So there's no reason I shouldn't have this one done already. It's funny because it is, it's stitch an inch. It really is only an inch tall. I mean, look at, this is my finger, right? Like my first knuckle. Like it's really only an inch, but it's really, really cute. It's like the little sailboat. And this is my favorite part right here. There's like, that's supposed to be a little sheep right there underneath the building. Can you see it? There's like a little sheep, but it's just a blob. It doesn't really look like a sheep, but it's cute. This next one is, for whatever reason, the picture came out and fell out, but this one is Sabrina and it's, um, I have it all pulled apart because I was using it. Um, it's, MD0, MD106 from Mirabilia. And I started this one with Suki the Brown Eyed Stitcher. We did it as a start along in November, let's see, November 28th, 2022. So this is another one. I can't remember if I worked on it in 2023 or not. I might have, but I can't. I, I can't remember. I don't know why I can't remember. I think I must have worked on it a little bit. So I'll show you a picture of where it was at the end of last year. And I'll show you where it's at now. Um, let's see, it's being stitched on 28 count, picture this plus linen in the color Sprite. And it has DMC threads, it has Karam water lilies, and it has beads in it. So uh, Suki the Brown Eyed Stitcher is doing hers, I'm doing mine and she's doing hers together. We're doing it on the same fabric but we're doing them slightly different. She's doing one over one skin and she's converting her beads to Krynix to make them sparkly instead of doing beads. And I'm doing mine with the two over two skin 
and the beads. And so eventually when they're done, we're hoping that we'll be able to, well, we're gonna get together at some point, we'll meet up, we'll have our completed Sabrinas, we'll hold them together and be able to say, look, they're beautiful whether they're stitched with beads or they're not stitched with beads. You don't have to use the beads if you don't want to. Um, which I think most people know that by now. Like if you're intimidated by a mirabilia because you don't want to do beads, you don't have to. You can just skip the beads. Um, we saw some really amazing tiny stitching of mirabilias done one over one at the Queen City Stitch Retreat. Some people have brought theirs that were done like really tiny stitched and they just subbed out either like, I, I don't think they had even small enough beads. Like they were just using really sparkly threads instead of beads. They were gorgeous. So just know you don't have to do the beads if you don't like beading. That's okay. And now to get on to, on with the show, um, I have some hanging threads, which makes me think maybe I did work on this. Uh, but this is where it's at now. So sorry that it's wrinkly. I'm going to put it on a board and see if I can stretch out some of the wrinkles in this. It just that's just terrible. I should I should definitely iron before I do this, but I don't. So that's where it's at. The lighting's not the greatest today either. But you can see I've got some beads in here. This is all beaded here. All here. And all. It's really, really pretty. These flowers here are all done with the Karen Water Lilies, the flowers and the petals. Really, really pretty. So one thing that I noticed, I don't know if it's just me, when I was looking at the pattern on in the picture, to me, I did not see teals here. And I wasn't thinking, like I didn't do a, pa a floss toss or whatever. I wasn't thinking about like, what are the colors that are actually in the, in the design? because I loved it so much that I thought when I looked at the design cover, these were all grays. And so now that I'm doing it on a pink background fabric, does that look weird? Like, is it gonna take away from it? Or I, I think when it's done, there's gonna be so much white that you're not gonna really be able to say like, oh, look, there's all these greens in there, teals in there. Why is that there? Why isn't it gray? I had a thought at one point maybe of taking out the teals and putting in grays instead because that's how my mind or my brain saw it when I was looking at the picture. I'll show you the picture. Like I can clearly see now, oh yeah, those were teals in there, right? But I also, my brain thought it was gray and I am slightly colorblind, like that I know I was diagnosed as not like between reds and greens or anything, but just colors that are very, very similar in shade I have a hard time distinguishing which is why I'm really really nervous about doing my own color swaps and doing switching things out because I'm afraid I'm gonna make things look really goofy and clownish so I tend to stick with the pattern as charted with colors but I mean I thought that looked to me it looked kind of like grays and maybe it's because the background fabric was more of a, a beige color but anyway Hopefully it's not going to look weird when it's done. I think it's going to be fine when it's done to have the teal colors. I think I'm just overthinking it. Once it's done and there's all the white dress left to do, it's probably because there's so little of the, the white part of the dress done, I think it's just so prominent that that's what my eye is drawn to. But either way, I think it'll be fine. But she's a really big one. She's got a lot of dress left. So I think I'll keep going with it. I don't think I'm going to take out the teal and replace it with grays, but because I've already stitched a lot of it. But that did cross my mind at one point of maybe taking it out and I don't know. Maybe someday I'll just stitch it again and do more of a monochromatic version where it's um, just whites and black and grays and have the pinks be the only popping color. But I gotta finish some other stuff before I think about trying to do another one twice. <laughs> so the next one here, I know I've worked on this year. I started it before, let's see. What did I have on this one? This one's called Moon Hair. And I'm gonna show you a picture of what it looks like because I don't have one printed out. Well, if 
put it on the screen and it's a heaven and earth design and the artist is Suzanne Geisman. I started it in 2020, 2021. I, it's been a long time since I started it, but, and I've gone over this before in other videos, but I started it on this pre-gridded 28 count fabric. I didn't like it. The reason I didn't like it was because it's, there's something wrong with it. When I tried to put it in a in a frame, it went like it, it went diagonal. Like it won't go straight. So when I tried to feed it onto the frame, I could never get the fabric tension. So that told me there was something wrong with the fabric because I've never had that problem before. But it it seems like and I don't know if you can even tell, but it just seems like it's it just it's it's skewed. There's something there's something off on it. And I didn't like 28 count uh and I don't really care for the pre-gridded fabric, to be honest. Uh, it makes my brain go, which which line am I supposed to be stitching on to start the block versus which one am I ending the block? I don't know if that makes sense. It's easier for me if the lines are actually on the break between the threads, but not an actual thread itself. If I'm stitching on the thread, I can't keep straight if the thread is the start, the top, the top part of the block, or if it's like the bottom edge of the block. So anyway, silly, I know, but I hadn't gotten all that far on it. So I restarted it. I restarted it on April 8th, 2023 as one of my Easter weekend starts. And um, Elisa from E Crafting in Colorado had started it with me that weekend. And this time I did it on 25 count. And it's one over one full cross. And this is where it's at. So I have more done this time. This is actually, I think, 10 or 12% completed. So it's all the way across the top now. That's like the, the top. That's as wide as it's going to be. And I go back and forth between parking and not parking. Sometimes I park, sometimes I don't. Um, this time, I guess it looks like I did some parking. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll start parking some threads and then the next time I pick it up, I just start from there and I just like stitch in all the loose threads, all the parked threads. And then the next time I pick it up, I'm like, oh, I should do parking on this and forget that I don't like parking. And then I park a bunch of stuff and then I'm like, oh, I don't like all these parked threads. And then I put it down and then I pick it up the next time and go, oh, look at all these threads already started. I'm just going to stitch in all the park threads. So... That's what I do sometimes. I haven't thrown away this fabric because maybe I'll use it for something else someday. But for now, it's it's a I guess technically is that a UFO if I restarted it? I don't think it's a UFO. It's just a restart. That's how I'm gonna call it anyway. UFO means unfinished object. I don't have any UFOs right now. The next one is my New Year's Eve start from 2022. So December 31st, 2022. It's called Princess of the Snows. And I did this as a New Year's Eve start with Amanda, Lucky Chance Stitcher. And I think she's a lot further on hers than I am on mine. I didn't work on this at all this year in 2023. So I'll show you where it was at the end of last year when I did my whip parade. And I'll, oh, and it's, it's being uh, stitched Princess of the Snows. It's a Joan Elliott design and it's being stitched on 28 count cracked ice from pole stitches. It's got DMC and Krynik and I'm not very far on it. That's it. Just the, stop, <laughs> the very top of her head. So you can see that that's the same as where it was last year in my whip parade. No progress this year, which I'm really sad about because I did want to pull this one out and work on it. In fact, it's the reason I had it pulled out was because I wanted to work on it. But what I could do is maybe pull it out and work on it. Let's see, future plans? Stop, stop, future plans. What I was going to say is I could maybe pull it out on New Year's Eve and work on it because I last worked on it last year on New Year's Eve, but I don't know if I will, so I'm not going to commit to that. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this fabric. Look at that fabric. It's so pretty. So pretty. I want more of that one. It's really nice. The next one that I've worked on, this year I actually worked on it, 
It's called Comanche. It's from Heaven and Earth, Heaven and Earth Designs. The artwork is by Jack Sorensen. And this is one that I did as a stitch along, start along sal with Joss Holm, who is the budget stitcher on Floss Dupe. She used to be, her channel name used to be Joss Holm, and then she changed her name to the budget stitcher. So that one I started January 1st. It was a New Year's start, January 1st, 2021. So this is a little bit older one. Um, not as old as a lot of my whips, but um, from the ones that I've shown you already. And I have 7,667 stitches done on this one. And I did work on it this year. It's being done on 25 count Lugana. There's 456,000 stitches in this one. It's just a regular sized one. And I'll show you where it was last year when I finished working on it. I didn't really get that much done. I think I only got like maybe two or 300 stitches on it. Uh, and this is where it's at now. I'm still not even finished the first page. So it's it's pretty. It doesn't look too pixelated. A little bit maybe, but not too bad. From a distance, it's definitely not going to look too bad. Like, not pixelated. Sorry, I have pixelated stuff on my brain today. I was talking to Amanda, Lucky Chance Stitcher, we were talking about full coverage designs and how sometimes they can look a little bit pixelated. So that's that one. Um, really love this one. I think it's once I get down into the detail of um, of the Comanche warrior, I think it's going to be really cool. And the horse. I think it's going to be really neat. I think I only had that one pulled out for a couple of days. So I, I'd love to work on all of my projects. That's, that's my problem is I want to work on all of them all at the same time, all now. And I want to start everything. And I want to finish everything because I want to actually get it done. <laughs> so I hard to prioritize. I'm having a hard time prioritizing, which is why I have mixed thoughts about what to do for 2024 and I'm still kind of like thinking through what I want to do. Um, lots of ideas and things um, that I'd like to do, but I need to try to be realistic about what I can accomplish. You know, it's a normal stitching conundrum. All right, the next one is a stitch along. This one's actually a stitch along, a sow that has monthly um, monthly progress that needs to be done. And let me find this one on my on my app. It's where did it go? Oh, it's called Au Fil de Nichois Jardin Privé. And this is a printed copy from it's a PDF because I, I purchased it as a PDF. And so this is a stitch along that's being hosted by the Highway Stitcher, Colette, and her and there's a few people that go to Stitch West and they work on this together. Um, Brenda from Handwork Maniac is working on it as well. Um, Julie Stitching at the Cabin is working on it. I think there's a few other people. I can't, sorry, I didn't write it down. I should have written down all the people working on it, but so the, the idea here is that you'll stitch on one birdhouse per month. It started in October of 2023 and it goes till October of 2024. And some people started with this first birdhouse and they're just doing October, November, December, January, February, like that all the way across. Uh, some people started here with October, November, December, because they're kind of themed by the month. Like this one looks like a Christmas one, so that makes sense that it's December. So I did that. I st started in the middle I counted my way up here. I stitched across the top so that I'd have a border to work from. And I started mine in October, then November, and I haven't done December yet. And it's getting close. I should probably pull this out and work on it. Um, but I'm happy with myself because I actually did keep up with um, the month so far. So far, December's not over. But let me put it on a board. It's easier. And then you don't get all the backlit. Um, so there, I'm actually, actually keeping up with it. So I've got my October and my November. And that pumpkin is just darling. And the owl is just darling. And the woodpecker. This was really fun. I enjoyed working on this one. Um, so now I gotta get my December one done. I gotta get that done. Now the question is, do I trust my counting well enough? Like if I messed up the counting over here, I could fix the border a little bit, but do I trust my counting enough 
to do border all the way across the top because like, it's just a straight line right and it's a repetitive border so if I miscount at any point I'm gonna be off like way off so I might just kind of work my way backwards and do the birdhouses going in the other direction just because I I don't know I'm afraid that I'm gonna miscount that top border I don't know what would you do but this fabric I got to talk to about talk to you about the fabric it's just gorgeous look at the fabric this is from oak crown studios and it's called i don't want to mess up the name of it it's called um lurking in the woods from oak, oak crown studio that's uh, amy fiber arts amy has her own business she does fabric dyeing now in case you didn't know i think a lot of people are uh, know now because uh i keep seeing her people working on her fabrics all over the place on youtube now on floss too um so lurking in the woods this I think so far is my favorite fabric and this is a Lugana it's a 32 count Lugana and I am I am so in love with this it looks like it could be woods it could be done with a sky scene it could because it's got the blues in there but it's also got the um the nice neutral tans like look at that it's so pretty I really love this fabric so far it's in my top 10, top five, probably top five, maybe top three of Oak Crown Studio Fabrics, definitely. I've got a few more that I wanna try, but this one I love, love, love. I would definitely order this one again. And definitely the Lugana, her Luganas, they're so soft. Like working on it, it's just like, not so soft that it, like the, the thread slips, but just like on your hands when you're touching, it's, it's dreamy dreamy fabric all right so so this one I do have to keep up with like I really do want to get this one done in 2024 <laughs> because I'm not talking about 2024 plans but this one's gonna get done in 2024 this next one is called beloved and it's one that I do every month on the second day of the month um, I haven't been exceptional <laughs> about doing it every single month. Um, the second day of every month isn't always a day where I where I can stitch or I've been on some trips or um, things have just come up where I haven't been able to stitch on it. But I did stitch on it several months this year on the second day of the month. And so it's called Supersized Beloved. It's the supersized version. And the artwork is by Adele Sessler. Quite a few people are working on this. Uh, different versions of it. There's a regular version. There's a mini. I think there's a mini version. Um, but this is the supersized. And I'll show you where it was last year. Because I did start this one. When did I start? Oh, did I just start this one? I don't know about this. It says I started on January 2nd, 2023. But I thought I started this one. That's not right. Because I started this one last year because I was having a hard time working on it and then I put it down I made a game out of it and I put it down so that's not the right start date I'm gonna have to fix that that's not right but that's when the first time that I worked on it this year was January 2nd that's probably why it put that date there but it's being worked on 25 count Lugana one over one pull cross so you should be seeing where it was last year when I worked on it and this is where it is now not a whole lot more progress but it's teeny tiny stitching like this is going to be a massive project and it's kind of checkerboarded here because i was trying to make a game out of I, I lost my stitchy bug and i just wasn't feeling like stitching and i thought if i made a game out of it like oh let's spin the wheel and if it goes like one two three four five six seven eight nine if i spun whatever number then it would tell me what direction to go next so i finished a block and then it said one so I went here and then it said three. So I went here and then it said one again. So I went here and then one and I kept spinning and getting ones. And I was like, okay, that's annoying. <laughs> and then it wasn't fun anymore. It still wasn't fun, but anyway, I put it down for a while. So now I'm just kind of filling in a lot of the different areas here and doing more cross country. Somebody told me, oh, you shouldn't do that with the, <laughs> with the checkerboard stuff. You're gonna get rigid lines in it when it's done. And my response was like, probably not like, 
I don't know, it was kind of cheeky. And I was like, you think I'm going to get this done <laughs> in my lifetime? This is more one that I stitch on because I just love, like, I, I would love to finish it, but it's a super size. Am I ever going to finish it? Probably not, but it is kind of fun to work on. So anyway, I know that wasn't a very nice response. Actually, I don't know if I actually responded that way, but in my brain I did. I was just like, you think I'm going to get this done? Like, I, girl, I don't think I'm ever going to have to worry about grid lines or <laughs> any kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to have to worry about that. The next one that I started, another start this year, <laughs> it's kind of a theme I started a lot this year. I wasn't going to, but I did. Uh, this was an April 1st start, 2023. And it's one that I started before going to Stitch North because I wanted to have a simple one that I could take with me, have a little bit of like outline stitching done so then I could do some fill in. And that is a brainchild idea that I'm, I got from Amanda. She's like, when you go to a retreat, have something that is like outlined where you have like big blocks of areas that you can just fill in because then you don't have to count. You can stitch, you can talk, you're not distracted. So Amanda's a genius because it did help. It helped to have an area that I could just fill in. So it's still in a cue snap because it's my travel piece now. Like every time I go somewhere, if I feel up to stitching when I travel, like I, I don't stitch well in the car. I don't stitch well in hotels. I don't really stitch very well when I'm not in my stitchy chair. Like I just, I'm very regimented or I don't know what the word is, like patterned or like, I just feel like I can, I have to have things feeling a certain way around me, like with space and like my back can really bother me if I'm sitting in a chair that's not comfortable. So if I'm not in my stitchy chair, I tend to not stitch very well or not very often. So, um, but anyway, back to what I'm trying to show you. Uh, since I don't have a picture from last year, it's a new start. It's called Pixie Couture Collection. It's Morning Glory from Nora Corbett. So it's uh, NC126, Morning Glory. And I love the fabric I chose for it. It's bright, it's cheerful, and I'll take the part of the, I'll take one thing off the cue snap because it goes just a little bit above. Um, so it's not very far <laughs> and you'd think I would have more done since it was something that I did not only at a stitch retreat, but I did it at Queen City Stitch Retreat also. I've had two, uh, two retreats I've taken it to. I've taken it on a couple of other trips. I took it up when I went to, after I went to Stitch North, I went to visit my dad and I worked on it a little bit there. Um, but it's just slow going because I only work on it when I'm traveling. So, and again, since I'm not a very good travel stitcher. It's not coming very quickly, but this will continue to be a travel piece for me. I don't work on it at home. and It's one that it's very easy for me to just stick it into. Um, well, I have it in this beautiful bag that Amanda Lucky Chance Stitcher made for me and gave to me at Stitch North. It's so pretty. This is my favorite. It's the very first fabric project bag that I ever had. That, and it was gifted to me and it was handmade with love and... She's my best stitchy friend. So thank you, Amanda. This is, it's my favorite. So this one goes with me everywhere. Whenever I go anywhere. Because even if I don't stitch, I still take it with me. <laughs> so so this is going to see a lot of places. It's it's like, it's going to be well-traveled and see lots of fun places. I took it to Branson, Missouri when I went with my husband. I didn't do any stitching, but it went with me. Um, it's been to North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. It's been to um, outside of Brampton, outside of Toronto at Stitch North. It's been to uh, a couple of small towns in Missouri as some day trips. So um, it's 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 been to Moncton, New Brunswick, where my dad lives. So it's it's going to be very well traveled, and I keep it very protected though. Like this is always in another bag because I don't want. To. This next one is one that I have not worked on this year. It was still on some scroll rods until probably this week. I took it off scroll rods so that I could use the scroll rods for my current project, my Christmas project that I started. Uh, it's called It Is Well from My Big Toe. And I don't think I worked on it this year. I, I, don't, I can't remember. So I'm gonna have to show you a picture of where it was last year. And then I'll show you where it's at now. 
and we can discover together whether I actually worked on it this year. So this is where it's at now. Not a lot done on it yet. So it's just kind of that bottom, bottom right hand side. It's really fun to work on. There's not a lot of difference in the threads themselves. I'm using the call for threads. But when I look at them, let's see if I can show you what I mean. Like there's not a lot of difference between the thread colors. There, there is when you look at them together. Like here, like if you look at the three colors, like you can definitely see that there are three separate colors here. But I find that when I have them together on the fabric, stitched together, I don't see a lot of difference. And it's not just the lighting. I mean, the lighting is probably helping, but like you can see the letters are one of the colors. But like in here with the green and the blue, like I'm having a hard time, even without this bad lighting, telling a huge difference between them. So it doesn't mean it's not pretty. It's just I'm not seeing a huge difference. Maybe because of the variegation in them, I'm not sure. Could be the dye a lot. Not sure, but it's still pretty. This next one is called The Toy Box and it's artwork by Donna Gelsinger. It's from Heaven and Earth Designs. And it's such a pretty wintry one. Kind of a Christmas theme with the wreath and the toy store. I just, I love this classic design. I saw um, Crafty Gaming Jamie worked on this one and she finished it a couple years ago. And ever since I saw her working on this one, I had to have it. So I've had this one, I think I started it probably three or three years ago, probably longer ago than that. So I'll put a picture in of where it was last time at the end of last year. And I did work on this this year. Not a lot, but I did do a little bit. I still have a whole bunch of parked threads that I'm trying to get woven in. And it is a bigger fabric. I started it in the middle and then worked my way up to the top left corner because I like working in the top left corner. But then I had a whole bunch of parked threads and okay, let's see if I can get this all in one shot. And this is where it's at now. And it's still got some uh, marks on it from where I had my Q-snap because I just worked on it in the last, this past month. So I worked Primarily, I worked up a little bit there, but I worked um, over here and tried to do some fill in here along the door frame. That's mostly where I worked. I thought maybe what I might do is just work um, two columns of 10, so like a total of 20 across, and just fill in and just go all the way down to the bottom. Because I had already had some of this filled in last year as I was doing some cross country. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just work columns all the way to the bottom. And then I'll go to the next two 10-inch uh, columns and work. So rows of 20, not rows, columns of 20 across, just work all the way from top to bottom and work all the way in that fashion, just work all the way across the piece that way and fill it in from left to right. Just a thought. I don't know if I'll do that, but that's the little doll in the middle because I started this one in the center where the center start. I got her face done. And then realized like, oh, this cross country stitching is and filling in is not my favorite. And so I counted up to the top from here. I counted up and did some work across and made my way over to the corner and then started filling in. I started doing diagonal stitching and then I stopped and filled in, started filling in the door and then I started. So I don't know. Every time I pick it up, I decide what I want to do on it. It's not the same every time. I, I rarely stitch the same way every time I stitch. It's kind of just how do I feel like stitching today and sometimes I stick with it for the same for a, uh, an entire piece but something that's this big it's not a super size it's a regular size but something that is this big I probably won't like consistently stitch on it for the whole thing so eventually I'll be like oh, okay I'm gonna do all these park threads and then the next time I'll pull it out and go oh I'm gonna do more parking <laughs> And then I'll probably work my way down toward the middle again and go, no, I don't want to work in the middle. I want to work on the, anyway, 
you get the idea. The next one that I have is, and my glasses keep sliding down, I'll do like the, the nerd thing. Uh, I do that actually. <laughs> I have to be careful because I'm on Zoom calls for work and I'll just, all of a sudden I'll be like, whoop, and I'm just like, oh, I hope nobody saw me do that. That's really nerdy. <laughs> but I'm a nerd, so I guess that's fine. The next is a new start this month and it's called Christmas Shops. It's from the Cross Stitch Studio and it has 630,000 stitches. It's a big one, 180 pages. And... I'm stitching it on 25 count Lugana, one over one full cross. I started it on December 15th. Now this was originally going to be uh, a New Year's Eve or New Year's Day start with uh, CJ Stitches, uh, Mama Carmen too on Instagram. She's CJ Stitches on YouTube, Floss Tube. And I was we were gonna start that as a New Year's Day start, but some of our plans changed. And I think there were a couple of people who reached out to me and said, hey, let me know when you're going to do it on December or on uh, January 1st. So I need to reach out to those people and say, I'm so sorry we started early. So for reasons, just uh, personal reasons, uh, between the two of us, we decided we wanted to, sorry, itchy nose. We decided we wanted to start it earlier. And um, so we did December 15th, we started it. So currently I have 1,123 stitches that I got in on it. Um, I haven't had as much time to stitch. Like I, this is one of the ones I've been stitching on, like all the way through Christmas. Um, but I, unfortunately, the week before Christmas got really busy. I had been away as well, uh, visiting my dad, and um, I got home on the 13th. So we started this one on the 15th. Um, I should show you what it looks like. This is called Christmas Shops, and it doesn't say who the artwork is by, but. Maybe it says it somewhere else on the website, but it doesn't say it on the printout, but it's really pretty. Uh, Darren the Dizzy Stitcher has this on his list to start next year. So I'm like, yay, another person doing Christmas shops. It's a fun one. There's a lot of black. I'll just let you know. It, there's like 10% of the chart is black. 10%? Might be more. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of black. And I did a center start, which is funny because I just got finished telling you on Toy Shop how much I hate a center start. And what, before I started this, I was like, okay, I'm going to start in the top left corner. And then I was like, no, I'm going to start in the middle. And then I was like, no, I'm going to do, st I couldn't decide. So when I charted out where the middle was, it's this sign that's in the middle. It's right, right there. It's, it says Sugar Plum Boutique. So you can actually start seeing now where it says boutique, like the letters are coming in. And you can also see where the S is there for sh the sugar plum. So it's kind of fun. It's been, I've been filling it in with the sign there and that's been really fun. So that's about 1100, just a little over 1100 stitches. I still have this thought that maybe I'll do cross, like um, cross country, like extreme cross country and just do the black, do all the black first. But what I'm finding is that a lot of the, the black is throughout the whole thing. So it's not like there's like large areas of black. It's like there's a lot of black in this tree. There's a lot of black in this tree. And it's like it's scattered through the whole chart. And I'm afraid I'll miscount if I do that. If I had a, a color that was like very saturated, like in a sky or like a border, then I think it would make sense for me. But uh, this one I'm a little worried because it's very confetti heavy. So I thought, well, for now, I'll keep going in the middle maybe I'll work my way up to the top left. I don't know. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna work on filling in the sign because I think that's really fun. And it's kind of a, a neat like little focal point where it's like, okay, it's, it's an object, it's in the picture and it's finished, so. Yep, so we're gonna keep working on this one. Um, not talking about plans next year. So therefore, you're not hearing me say, I'm gonna work on it next year because I don't want to say that, even though I'm going to, um, but I'm not officially saying it in this video. I'm not talking about 2024 plans. Next one is another new start for 2023. I told you I kind of been a little crazy with starts this year. Um, I mean, not wild, but more than I had thought I would do. I was really hoping to get more finishes done. But this is a sow, so not 
a full-on stitch along where we have goals and deadlines and things like that more of like a start along we all started together it's uh, woman in a field of flowers the design is the the artwork is by Eder Rosa and stitch is so beautiful charted it it's beautiful absolutely stunning I just love this so there's a group of us that started it together let me find it I love this app like it just tracks everything for me so I can just look it up um, it's I'm stitching it on 25 count Lugana one over one full cross started it on November 18th it's the 18th I put the 18th in here I think that was whatever that Saturday was of that weekend of November and so far I have 8,070 stitches done and three full pages completed. And I started in the top left corner and that's where I got to. I have a little bit, a little bit past this center. I worked my way across the top a little bit, but that's most of it. So you can see the flowers starting to come in here the very top of the flowers in the field. Every time I was working on this, I was like, that looks like a mushroom in the sky, but it's just a cloud or however the artwork was done. But every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, there's the sky mushroom. Oh, the colors in this are so fun to work on because you've got the rich, beautiful blues of the sky, but then you've got this, these gorgeous reds and... Uh, oranges and pinks and the oh it's gonna be so fun really love this one so it's kind of fun we have a little uh group of of people on instagram we have a group chat and every so often we just kind of touch base and see like hey how you doing and how's yours coming along and we ooh and ah like oh we love this so much <laughs> the next one is oh the next one is another new start and this one was started on December 1st of this year with Denise who is Perfect Little Stitches on Instagram. It's called Santa's Magic. It's a Mirabilia. It's MD number 15. It's out of print unfortunately. Uh, but I still see it on eBay. It comes up quite a bit and I don't think it's crazy expensive. It's not like hundreds of dollars. It's like maybe I think I've seen it around the $40 mark, so it's not too bad. $40, $50, somewhere in there. It just depends. Depends on the time of year. If you wait long enough, you'll find this pattern on eBay for a steal. So if you want it, you don't have it, and you're willing to wait, just keep checking because you'll find it. So let's see. I don't have the fabric listed, but I think I have it in here somewhere. Let's see, what was the fabric? Ah, here we go. The fabric is, picture this plus in the color Velt, V-E-L-D-T, and it's 32 count linen. And I did a, a center, center top start. So I started um, up here, in the crown, in the top of his head. And it's a big piece of fabric because it's a pretty big design. Uh, Hopefully this board is not making too much noise. That is, that's where I got to so far. And then I still have a thread hanging. <laughs> so there's going to be some uh, beads that go in here to finish this off, but this is essentially the top of his head and yeah, it's hard to tell. It doesn't really look like anything right now. But it's like right here the top eventually the beads will come in and then this will wrap around and then you can see that's those two little bands right there so it's a pretty big piece actually but I'm really happy with the color of fabric that I chose I used um, fabricviewer.com I went in and, and checked out some picture this plus fabrics using that and this is the one that I came up with that in my opinion looked the way I wanted it to look there were some other fabrics that it, I've seen it done. It looks stunning. There's like a really 
uh, beautiful version on red. There's another uh, couple versions on like a stormy blue. So there's a lot of options with this pattern. The hard part about it is that this area in here is fabric. Like there's, it's not fully stitched here. So when you choose a fabric, you have to find a complementary color that goes with everything because that's going to show through. So for example, if I chose white, a white fabric, that's just going to be white in the background. So you just, that's, that's the only difficult part of this pattern. I think it was so far, it's been the hardest one for me to choose a fabric for, uh, but I'm happy with this one. I think it's going to be okay. This next one is my last start of 2023. Not the last one that I started, but it's like the only other one that I've shown so far. This is the last of the ones that I had as new starts for 2023. So anything I show from this point forward, other than the one I show at the very end, which is my current project that I'm working on, everything else is going to have a photo of where it was last year, I think. I don't think I have anything else that... Um, that I started this year that I haven't shown to you. So this is called Strawberry Fields Forever. It's from Blackbird Designs. This is being done as another stitch along that I started with a group of ladies. Um, let's see who's in the group. There's a bunch of people in the group. There's Jeannie from GWiz65. She's got a floss tube channel if you check her out. See if I can. The easiest thing to do is just pull up my group chat. We have a group chat on Instagram, um, and again, this is where we were planning out. Like we had a Zoom call to kick off the stitching, and so that was kind of fun. That was really fun. Where did it go? People. Christy Keith is in this. She is. Uh, one of the Floss Boss and Cousins. If you've seen the Floss Boss and Cousins uh, Floss Tube channel, go check them out. They're they're hilarious. Um, so Christy is part of our group. We have Odia, who is stitching below sea level on Instagram. Holly Hogue, who is stitching Holly Hogue on Instagram. We have Holly Neal, who is Hobbies of Holly on Instagram. Jeannie from GWiz65. Check out her YouTube channel. Lauren, who is Sweet Stitches by Lauren on Instagram, and Nancy, who is the Disorderly Stitcher on Instagram. So there's a pretty good group of us that started it. Um, not everybody was able to make the first Zoom call, but we're going to have another Zoom call. Um, I think maybe we'll try and do it the second Saturday of, or sorry, first Saturday of every month. So we did one on the first Saturday of December, and we're going to do one on the first Saturday of January. If anyone's interested, let me know. And I haven't scheduled the Zoom yet, so there's no nothing to send out with a link yet, but that'll be coming because it's next week. Next week is gonna be the first Saturday. So, uh, Strawberry Fields Forever, we started it together. And actually there may have been, I think some of, the, some of us who are working on it, um, I started it, it was a first start for me, but I think there were some others who had a little more progress on it than me. Um, but we all joined in together. Let's see, we started December 2nd, which was the first Saturday, which also coincided with um, what's that event? The online, uh, the Jingle Ball, or is that what it's called? The Jingle Ball or Stitching Ball, or I, I forget. <laughs> um, I was tempted to actually join it this year, but I knew I wasn't going to be available that for that whole weekend. So when I started it, I barely had anything done on it. I had like that much done. Not even, I think I had like just, I think the only thing I got done during that Zoom call was like that part of the chimney. So since then I have finished a lot of the house. All I have left to do, I have a lot of the windows filled in. I just have to fill in these windows and then the house is done. And it's actually really, uh, really fun. I'm enjoying this one a lot. I thought I'd start with the house, maybe move down to like the fences and kind of, so I'm kind of working my way down and get this part done and then either come up this border here or this border here, whichever kind of, whichever I decide and then work the border and then fill in the rest of it afterward. That's kind of what I'm thinking about doing with this one. So that was 
that's it for my starts for 2023. The rest, like I said, should have some progress pictures, like here's where it was last year. Actually, now that I say that, I don't think I worked on anything else this year. So everything I show you, if I continue, if I continue doing video, everything I show you is going to be exactly the same as last year. So now I'm kind of like, should I keep showing everything? Should I just show just these ones and say everything else? You can check my video from last year. Um, kind of thinking that. I think what I might do is I might just show you, because I know that's everything I've stitched on pretty much. I think I can find out. Let me check my app real quick. See if there's anything else I haven't shown you. Oh, well, I do have Atlantic Seaboard Sampler. I can show you that one. And I also have Fruits of Plenty. And I also have Home is Where the Magic Is and Lost No More. See, I do have some more. I guess I do have a few more. And Santa Stamp. That's it though. So I guess I have a few more. Let me grab those ones. I'm gonna, I'll put this on hold and I'll be right back and I'll show you the ones that I didn't show you. And then I'll decide whether I'm gonna show everything else or maybe save that for another video if anybody really wants me to go through them again. Um, all right, hold on. Okay, I pulled out a few more. Um, there are actually a couple that I forgot to show you because I don't have them in my app. They're like really small um, projects. So I didn't bother putting them in my app. Um, I should though, because I was hoping I would have them done really quickly and then I haven't. So uh, this one is called, sorry for the zipper. This one's called Chubby Fox. It's a Jeanette Douglas design. I started that... Uh, in October. It's really cute. I started it uh, just tiny little start in hand while I was driving or I wasn't driving my husband was driving um, while we were driving and he was driving and I just started on this little piece so there's not very much done it's just but it's really cute. I keep thinking I should have done it on more of a fall colored but this little green swatch was something I had handy and I really love the color. So I think he'll pop on it. It'll still look like he's in the forest, like nature. So that'll be a good one. Another one that I started in 2023 is from the Queen City Stitch Retreat. I'll show you a picture of, it's the, um, the Nora Corbett uh, special design that she charted, created for attendees of the retreat. You can get it now on the website at queencitystitchretreat.com. There's a link to the PDF where you can download it for free. And this is where I got to. This fabric, what fabric is it? It's a limited edition fabric, 28 count Lugana from Color and Cotton. It's just a really pretty purple. So didn't get that one done. I didn't really get like this is this is the only thing I stitched on at the retreat which is the right way up this way this is the only thing I worked on and that's as far as I got that's all the stitching I did the entire weekend because I was talking to people and I had so much fun and I highly recommend the Queen City Stitch Retreat it's a blast so just super fun group of people Maggie and Amy are awesome and got to meet um Allie Z and Got to see Stitch and Shorty, Ashley, she was there. It was really fun. So I, I'm one of those people that I don't go to get tons of stitching done. I go because I like the social part of it. I like to meet people. I like to see people. I'm totally awkward with meeting new people, but they somehow have grace and just like treat me like I'm normal, even though I'm not, but it was fun. Another new start I had in 2023, for whatever reason I had put it, I put it away, I put it on a shelf and totally forgot that I started it, which I shouldn't have forgot because it's one of my favorite ones. And this is Fruits of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. And it's being stitched on 36 count platinum linen 
one strand over two. And it's still in the Q snap because I guess I had plans of continuing to work on it, but that's my progress on it so far. Using a couple of different purples. So I'll tell you what the purples are I'm using because uh, I went nuts and I chose my own uh, my own threads for this, which I, honestly I struggled with this. It's two colors. I mean, come on, two colors, and I just struggled and struggled with it. Shouldn't be that hard, but the darker color is a color and cotton thread called pop in the color popsicle. That's what the the darker one is, and then I'm doing a variegated. This is slightly variegated, but not a lot that I think it'll make a difference um, when I'm stitching. Like, I don't think there's going to be tons and tons of, like, I think the dark is dark enough that the light will still be light and show differently than the dark. But I don't know if that makes sense, but it is slightly variegated, but it's the closest I could get to um, a solid color in a purple that I liked. Uh, but then... The variegated, the lighter color, is a variegated sulky thread. It's a um, size 12, cotton 12 sulky, and the color it's 4081. And for the life of me, I can't remember what color, like the actual color that that is, but like the name of the color is some kind of like a, I don't know if it's like berry, huckleberry, or I don't know, I can't remember. But that's the lighter one, and so. I'm hoping between those two colors that the darks will be dark and the lights will be light and then the variegation in this one will be what really sets it off. I got this idea from Amy from um, Mimi Stitchery on Flosstube. Check out her channel. She's amazing. She's done some amazing pieces and she finishes stuff like big stuff that she actually finishes. She just finished Lost No More, the Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. Go see her last video. It's stunning. Um, but anyway, she did this on with some teals and navy blues, and hers turned out spectacular. So I don't think mine will come anywhere near as beautiful as hers, but I wanted to do something in the purple colorway. So we'll see how that turns out. I don't have enough really done on it to be able to tell. You can't really see the variegation very well yet, like a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm trying to get the light not to be quite so bright on that. Oop, covering it doesn't help. There, can you see a little bit of the, the darks are dark and the lights, oh, you can see it here. Yeah, you can see it in the flowers here and you can see that's the sulky. It's really pretty. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't think I actually worked on this one this year. It's the Santa stamp, which is a Dimensions Gold Collection kit. I have it in my app, but I think I worked on it at the end of last year. I don't think I actually worked on it this year. So if you see, uh, I'll show you a picture of where it was. Well, here's what it's going to look like. I'll show you that first. This is Santa stamp. It's an out of print. You can still get it on eBay, but it's not the most reasonably priced. I bought this at Michael's like 20 some years ago when they actually sold beautiful dimensions kits at Michael's. They don't sell anything at the Michael's stores near me. Hardly any cross stitch at all. Just DMC flosses pretty much and a couple of Ada's. But anyway, this one is one of my favorite Santas of all time. And I'll show you where it was last year. Here. I don't think I've gotten anything done on it since then. I started parking on it last year. But this probably looks the same, I'm guessing, as it did. I might have got a small little bit done this year. Sorry, trying to get all these threads untangled. This is going to be... Awkward. I don't know why I parked on this one. It doesn't help me at all. But this is where it's at. It's still working in the top left corner. I did start parking a little bit so I could do a page, kind of like a page finish, I guess. Dimensions kind of has pages, They're like big sheets of paper. But anyway, I started doing just a tiny smidge of back stitching. There, is that a little? Maybe that light isn't helping at all. Maybe that's too bright. But anyway. I love, love, love the colors in this piece. I love the little doll. 
Once I get her face back stitched, she's gonna really look cute. So we'll discover together as I'm editing whether I actually did any progress on it this year. I need to use my app more for tracking the, the pieces I actually worked on. I, I got I did really well with putting them the projects in the app so that I know that the ones that are that I put in the app, I put them in as I started them this year. I did a couple last fall that I put in the app. So what's nice is I know what, what's in my app is pretty much what I started working on since last November 2022 through till now. Anything else I know I haven't worked on since last year or earlier. Some of them I haven't worked on in 20 years. It sounds awful, but that is the case with some of my projects. I just haven't worked on them in... And that's where I'm kind of stuck for 2024 plans because I have so many I started so long ago. I'm really in this mindset of like, do I really want to stitch that? It's something I started so long ago. Do I want to now? Like maybe it's just been so long. Like maybe I just don't really want to anymore. I hate to say that because I never want to start something that I don't finish. I want to finish it. Um, <laughs> I had some comments in one of my, a couple of my videos this year where Apparently I'm a slob with my projects and um, it's not right for me to never finish anything. And I don't know, I try not to let comments bother me, but outright calling me a slob, saying that I'm a slob with my projects and that I'm an awful stitcher, just, that didn't sit very well. Might be partly why I haven't filmed as much the last few months, just doesn't sit well. Like I, I tell myself I'm not gonna let comments bother me, but that kind of did. Like, I'm not a slob. I have everything, like, neatly organized. Um, I care about everything that I stitch on. I don't have things, like, tossed anywhere. I don't have them just, like, stuffed in bags. Like, I'm very careful. I, I, I fold things. I have, I don't iron everything, but, like, I have things, like, very neatly and tidily kept. But, I don't know, being told that I'm a slob with my projects. I know. I gotta stop saying that because, like, don't dwell on it. It's negative. I shouldn't dwell on the negative stuff. But, anyway, that commenter is blocked on my account. I, I don't want to see any more negative comments. I've got several and I don't want to. And I know other people, some of my other cross-stitching friends have gotten negative comments from that stitcher too. And that's just wrong. Like just, you know, we're all people. We don't, we have feelings. Like I might not stitch the way everybody else stitches or I might do things different, but I don't think that makes me a bad stitcher. So anyway, next one. I also don't think I got any progress this year, but it was in my app. So I think I worked on this last year. So what I show you here might actually be the same thing as I showed in my last um, Whip Parade video last year. But this is Mini Home is Where the Magic Is from Randall Spangler. It's a mini one, so there's good chance or hope of me getting this one done in my lifetime. And I don't know if I know what percent complete it is. I might have put that in here. It looks like... This one is 34% complete, but like I said, it might look exactly the same as last year, but this is where this one's at. Some, oops, I'm sorry. Let me get some of these hanging threads out of the way. And let me put it behind the board because that does kind of help me hold it. There. The little fairy is really cute and the moon. So we're starting to see some of the house come into shape. So that's 34%, you know, there's only two thirds left. <laughs> only. <laughs> this one's done one over one on full cross on 28 count. And I was finding it to be a little bit bulky. Um, and that's one of the reasons working on some of the 28 count one over one that I decided not to do 28 count anymore. I'm gonna finish this one on 28. Obviously I've started it. I've gotten far enough along that I am gonna finish it. But anything that I've started pretty much since this one has like mostly been 25 count because I like the coverage. I like the way um, the threads, they cover well enough for me, especially since I always do full cross that I've never had to, I, I don't worry about any of the fabric showing through from behind. And then it's not so tight like the 28 where I feel like it's, I'm struggling to try and get the threads to fit because it's just very bulky, but if I was doing two over one ten stitch, it probably would be easier. But I, like I mentioned on one of, on my home in the mountains, it has to be one that's not like really crazy confetti heavy because otherwise I won't, I can't. It's just too bulky for me. But 
I'm glad I checked uh, because I know I definitely worked on this one in 2023. This one is Lost No More. It's a Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. It's another one I bought at Michael's 20 plus years ago. Um, would have been probably 25 years ago, I think. It's been out for a long time. And I remember the exact Michaels I bought it from, and it was before I moved to Colorado, so I know that it was at least 25 years ago. But this is a really pretty one, and I worked on it at Easter weekend. I pulled it out, and I did just a little bit. So I'll show you where it was at the end of last year. And then I'll show you where it is now. I did not get a lot on, done on it. I worked on it for a couple days. Still has a hoop mark in it. I need to actually get my steam iron out and try and get that hoop mark out before it leaves a permanent. It probably is permanent now. I don't know. I'm sure I can get it out, but I want to get it out before I get too much more stitching done. I want to just do it. But anyway, I digress. This is how far I got on it. A little more than last year. Every little stitch counts. Eventually I'll get this one done. And as I said, I'm glad I did go back through my app and look to see which ones I'd worked on this year because I totally forgot about this one because I had put it back away on my shelf. And it's called Atlantic Seaboard Sampler. This was called the very first Whipgo of 2023. I actually did start Whipgo this year. And this was the first week of January 2023 that I worked on it. And I think I did three or four days on it. Three days for sure. So I'll show you a picture of where it was last year. And then I'll show you where I got to this time. It's a cute little, it's like a band sampler. Each section has a different type of, different types of stitches, some fancy stitches, some beads on the apples that are really cute. I actually used to live in Nova Scotia, near Annapolis Valley. If I had stayed there longer as a child, I would have gone to high school in Annapolis Valley, but there was a definitely an apple picking season there, and it was a cherry carnival, cherry, cherry season. Apples and cherries were abundant. So I remember going and picking those fruits in the, in the fall. It was really fun. I haven't lived in Prince Edward Island, which is where this is Anne of Green Gables. I never lived there, but I've been there many times because I grew up in New Brunswick. So uh, these are supposed to be little fiddleheads. I don't know if you've heard of fiddleheads, but they grow um, in the bogs in New Brunswick. They're kind of a delicacy. They're kind of like, think of like asparagus, but the tops of them kind of curl in little curlicues. Um, I can't say they're like my favorite thing to eat. But not bad. I mean, they're greens. They're healthy. <laughs> kind of a thing. And then the potatoes. The potatoes are a big thing. The Canes is a big company in eastern Canada with their potato products. So. Um, then I stopped with Go. Um, after this, pretty much the second week of January. So I had gotten... Some news the second week of January this year that my mom passed away and I went up for went up to New Brunswick for her funeral and then I didn't do Whipgo again for the rest of the year so I know it, it seems like a failure that I started Whipgo and then I only did like a couple of projects that were called but in January I just um yeah I decided that it wasn't gonna work for me to to do Whipgo so it's okay to start to start out doing something and if things plans fall by the wayside that's in my book, that's totally okay. The, it's supposed to be fun. Stitching's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be regimented and rule-based. And like guidelines are fine. Guidelines are fun, uh, but I'm not gonna hold myself to the fire. Like you got to do this and you got to get that done. And like I work full time, so that's what my job is: <laughs> is having deadlines and work that has to get done. This should be work I want to do. So those. Okay, now that I've gone through my app and I've gone through my shelves and stuff, I'm. 95 only I know it's not a lot nine let's say 98 percent sure that I've showed you everything that I've worked on in 2023 I'm going to show you my last project which is my latest start which was a Christmas gift from my daughter 
I'm gonna go get it and I'm gonna show you that one and then I think I'm gonna end the video because I haven't worked on anything else that was in my whip parade from last year and if any of you guys want me to do a walkthrough of the rest of my whips I can I haven't even counted I don't know how many I have so I have a lot of projects that are kitted and ready to go but I'll do another video with my 2024 plans once I get those fully decided. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is my the one that I'm currently working on. I started it um, as a Christmas start and it's a cross stitch kit from Luca S. It's labeled here on the package. It's called Portrait of Girl, but on the website, it's called Girl Selling Flowers. This is what it looks like. I it, it's I find this absolutely stunning. There's something about looking at this at this picture, um, the innocence and in her face and her just I don't know. Art is supposed to draw a feeling, and you're supposed to feel something when you look at it. And I do when I look at this one. So I'd love to have this one stitched and hanging on my wall. My youngest daughter got it for me for Christmas. She's so sweet. My oldest daughter got me fabric and some beautiful little embroidery scissors. I have never had fancy scissors, so she got me some fancy scissors, which are, they cut, I, I didn't realize how uh, nice they are to cut with until now that I have them. I'm like, why was I using those crappy old ones that I had before? I'm, the pair I had before was just, I don't know, random craft scissors that I've had since I was younger. And anyway, so now I have fancy, they're like little stork ones. They're really pretty. Um, so this design, uh, I really, at this point, maybe it's because I'm still in the honeymoon phase on it and loving it because I just started it, but, um, I feel like this is one I want to keep working on until it's done. Um, there's a lot, let me just, before I show you where I'm at, um, the sky in this one, or oh, sky, it's not sky, but the background in this is a lot of, especially up here, it's all like one color and it's hard to just do like 280 stitches across and then 280 stitches back. So I also don't want to have like lines showing in it. So I decided to do this one in diagonal stitching. So that's what you're going to see is that it's diagonal stitched. Um, but it's also very much the same color as the fabric. So right now there's not a whole lot to see. It's a full coverage, but you can tell like it's, it's not the easiest to stitch. There's only like one, so far there's only two colors. There's like this color, which is almost the same color as the fabric. And then there's this darker color. And that's as far as I got so far. But that's the full size of it. It's an 18 count, Ada. It does have some very faint grid lines on it, which are not bothering me at all. I actually like them, but I'm not really following them either. Uh, I don't really count off the grid lines so much. I just, it's never been something that I, if I'm going to grid, I do have a, once in a while I do use a gridding marker, but it's one of those ones that's air soluble. So after like two, three hours, the ink just disappears. So you can mark and it's like a purple color. And then as it dries and the air hits it, it just, it fades. So it's there long enough that I can use it during the stitching session. But then by the next time I go to stitch the next day, it's gone. So it's kind of, it's kind of handy. Um, then I have to worry about like any marker stains or having a hard time getting it out, but it's just something I got at, I think I got it at Michael's or Joanne's, one of the craft stores. It's just an air soluble fabric marker. So that's it. That's everything that I've stitched on since last year. Probably a couple things that I showed you that I didn't, but couldn't remember. <laughs> and I think um, that's it. Um, if you made it this long, thank you for watching, and if you still want me to pull everything off my shelves and show you everything that I have that I haven't worked on, I can do that, but it's probably not a priority, um, just because it will take a long time, and this video is already really long, and I haven't even shown you, like, this is not even, maybe only a quarter of them, so look for a future video with 2024 plans. I'll probably do that in the next week or two. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.